Giles Arbour from Directors Talk and I'm speaking today with Stephen Sanderson, the Chairman and Executive Director at UK Oil and Gas Investments. Thanks for joining us today then, Stephen. Yeah, thanks very much. Pleasure. Now, you've just put out news um, about the volumetric analysis carried out by the Exodus Group who calculate that the Ariton 2 well could contain an aggregate best estimate oil in place of around 219 million barrels. Could you put these findings into context for us? Yes. Um, firstly, um, Exodus are um, a very well-established uh, international oil and gas consultancy. They've, uh, they've pub- also published quite a few other reports for us. They work for you know super majors, government. So you know their their, their work is highly credible. Um, I should state that the number you've said, 219 million barrels, is actually oil in place, which is oil in the ground. Um, they actually also calculated that um, the actual recoverable from that 219 is about 17 million barrels, which is quite significant. Um, I think the, uh, the the point to uh, to bear in mind on this is that uh, out of that 17 million recoverable and the 219 oil in place, um, the, the, the majority of it actually sits in uh, a structure which has already been drilled, in fact, by two historic wells. One was drilled in the 1950s by BP, um, and the other was drilled by uh, what's now British Gas in the 1970s. And uh, to cut a long story short, they uh, did, uh, in fact, encounter oil in several horizons. They were looking for a much deeper target. Um, They did try to test, but for a number of technical and mechanical reasons, they didn't get the oil to flow to the surface. Now, we've gone in there with very new new sort of petrophysical eyes and um, using new tech, who are arguably the world's... um, uh, Best expert on uh, what's called mist, you know, oil pay, uh, and also tight oil. You, you've probably seen that from our uh, releases in the wheeled. And they basically um, said that uh, there is uh, there are two oil columns actually within the the Ariton um, two well covered by British Gas. One which is in the Portland and the Purbeck, which is about um, 110 foot thick, about 78 feet of, of net pay. That means um, the area that you could extract oil from, and also a deeper one, which is about 200 feet um, thick, which has a net pay of about 127 feet. So, so both are, both are quite significant. So, I, I think um, this is not that part. Ariton is not exploration; it's actually appraisal. So, what we plan to do is to go in and drill a vertical well. We'll test the well properly. And if we uh, get a, a good rate uh, of oil to the surface, we'll then go almost immediately to drill a horizontal well, which will essentially be for an extended well test and to put the, uh, the oil on production as soon as possible. Um, part of the 219 million, 17 million um, uh, barrels recoverable, about 6 million of that is actually in two prospects, which are basically almost identical lookalikes to the, the Ariton um, uh, 2 well and the structure that we call Ariton Main. So if Ariton Main works, then basically we'll go and drill those, and um, that could basically you know, triple what we uh, will be finding um, in the Ariton Main structure. Brilliant. What are the timescales involved in the project? Okay, well, um, this is a very, very new license, so much that uh, we haven't actually signed on the dotted line finally yet with the um, Oil and Gas Authority. The license should be live on April the 1st. Um, the next step for us is clearly to go to the, uh, the Isle of Wight Council and um, submit a formal planning application. We have had talks with them last summer. Um, we uh, have all our drilling preparation studies completed already um, on on these wells. Um, so we also will have to do some environmental studies, look at um, uh, the the flora and fauna, make reports, environmental impact. And then when we do that, we uh, apply to the the local planning authority. Um, new government uh, rules say now that they have to uh, come to a decision with us in. Um, 16 weeks after application. So um, what we're really trying to shoot for essentially is to get planning permission to drill this well, um, I would think, at the end of 2017. Of course, once we get planning permission, um, 
we have to go to uh, three other uh, regulatory bodies, and I should say that the um, the oil and gas industry in the UK, particularly on the onshore, is, is very highly regulated. We have to get four approvals to drill anywhere. That's from the local county council, from the environment agency, from the health and safety executive, and then finally from the, uh, the oil and gas authority, which is part of the, um, the government, the Department of Energy and, and, and Climate Change. So it, it's quite a lengthy process. Um, we're assuming that it's going to take us about a year now with the new planning sort of uh, timing guidelines. And uh, then hopefully we can drill our first well in um, the end of 2017. Now, because this is an exploration well, we, uh, we know where we're going to go. We know which zones we're going to test. So, And it's a very shallow well. It's only 700-odd metres to, um, to the main Portland Purbeck Reservoir. So, you know, within uh, 30 days or so, we should uh, be uh, we're testing the well. And um, as I said, if it, if it works out to be very positive, then we'll have a, a plan in our um, uh, planning application that we can then go and drill a horizontal well, um, stimulate it using non-fracking uh, non um, techniques, and then see, you know, what, what um, sort of commercial rate we can get out. And if that works, then we'll also have an extended flow test permission as well. So we, you know, we could be producing oil and selling it fairly quickly. That's one of the real um, sort of um, drivers for this project. It's, it's something that um, could give us cash flow fairly quickly. Brilliant. OK. What does all this mean for UK oil and gas as a whole? Well, I, I think um, you saw in the RNS that we said that, you know, this is basically very significant and very material for the company because it actually... Um, really boosts our um, uh, recoverable um, uh, reserve or recoverable resources, I should say. Um, I said it sort of triples them. Actually, maybe my math is not so good. It's almost quadruples them, actually. At the moment, we have on our books in um, terms of uh, conventional oil and gas, we have recoverable um, resources of about you know, four and a half million barrels of which um, contingent resources I, you know, those that have actually been found by the um, found by drilling, but have not yet proven to be commercial, are about um, three and a quarter, three and three quarter million barrels. So, um, with 10 million of contingent resources in um, in the Ariton main alone, that that nearly triples our contingent resources. And overall, we're now up to um, you know just over 20 million barrels. So that that's a that's a material increase for a small company like us. So uh, as I said, you know the Isle of Wight is now a very significant part of our um, whole um, exploration, development, um, and appraisal um, portfolio. Brilliant. OK. Talking to us today was Stephen Sanderson, the Chairman and Executive Director at UK Oil and Gas Investments. Stephen, thank you for speaking with Directors Talk today. Our pleasure. You're very welcome.